Welcome to Wake Up with Pastor Scott and Pastor Jason Anderson from Living Word Bible Church in Mesa, Arizona. Grab a cup of coffee and enjoy this daily dose of scripture and morning prayer. Brought to you by Christian Living Radio. I don't know what that is. Stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Oh. You know where that's from? <laughs> it's from Monty Python's Holy Grail where he's running and the two <laughs> guards. <laughs> Wait, who is it? Sir Lancelot that's running? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Let's not guards. argue about uh, killed, uh. <laughs> If you don't know that movie, we apologize. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome to Wake Up, a daily Bible study from Pastors Scott and Jason Anderson, a morning scripture with your morning coffee, brought to you by Living Word. We encourage you to wake up with us every morning by watching us on YouTube. Visit wakeuptv.tv or search Daily Bible Study on YouTube. Oh, God bless you. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm the Pastor guards Jason. just kept looking, and they were so far off. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he wasn't. And they, all of a sudden, he just appeared right in front of them. <laughs> you have, Who even thought that was going to be funny? It's a really funny uh, part. And you probably, you could, you could YouTube it. Just type in uh, the Holy Grail, and then uh, type in uh, Lancelot Wedding. Wedding, yes. Okay. And uh, and then watch. I hope that's the a whole, safe clip for me to tell you to watch. I think the whole movie's fairly. <laughs> I don't know what else scene, might though, come up under that. Because search. even the other scene is like, all right, I want you to stay here and watch him. Yeah. Where are you going? I'm going with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want uh, to stay here and watch him. Anyway, I'm Pastor Scott. <laughs> I'm Pastor Jason, and it's good to have you guys with us. We're going to read a scripture. We're going to pray over your day. We're going to have a good time today. It's so good to be in God's Word every single morning and have a little time of prayer. It is. It just charges you up. So we're going to be in um, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. And we have an Easter egg in this episode. First person to find it is going to get a free coffee mug. I'm just putting that out there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there's an Easter egg in it. Coffee mug. And if you don't know what an Easter egg is, kind of Google it. It's like a video game. Yeah, yeah, it's a little... They hide something secret. that's... Something's yeah. out of whack. Okay. What well, it... No, I no, don't know. No, it's not what it me. Is. It's not you? No. Okay. Me. <laughs> now I want to find it. You pointed at me. <laughs> uh, we're talking about your message from this last weekend, and, and uh, if you haven't watched it, I just encourage you. you got to tune in, watch this, go back and watch the YouTube from this weekend. Uh, we're talking about This incredible. Is Us. Pastor Scott talked about you had seven things that you really brought right. out out of this story where these two were walking away from Jerusalem. And Cleo. Jesus, yeah, and Jesus meets them, on, and then he's—it's the day he resurrected, and right. they're discouraged, and and on the greatest day in human history, right? Uh, they're discouraged and downcast, and how Jesus met them where they were, how he got in their way in order to redirect their way, got them go back in the right direction. Um, and one of the things you brought up is that in this in this world, as ambassadors of Christ, that right. we have. I want you to say it, though. What do we have? We have diplomatic community from Lethal Weapon 2. Remember when they came to arrest him? <laughs> I and do. The, and, the, and the guy's like, you cannot arrest me. I have diplomatic community. And your point that you made is that as an ambassador of Christ is that um, we're in this world. We're not of it. We, we don't have to obey the sickness. We don't have to, right. to, to bow our knee to the poverty. We don't have to be in fear or anxiety. Right. What, what happens on this planet isn't us. Right. But we, we got born again. We're a new creation. We're in a new family, a family of God. We have a new father, Father We're God. We're not bound by the same uh, junk that the world is bound by. Uh-uh. Right? We don't have limits on our life because of uh, the family or the place that we grew up in, that we live a limitless life, that we're not bound by the shackles of depression that your mom had and your grandma yeah. had. I'm not bound by these things. That might be them because it's off of the TV show, This yeah. Is Us. Yeah. That might be them. But to us, we have a different family identity, that we can walk in health, we can walk in prosperity, that we can be blessed when we go in, we can be blessed when we go out, that the economy does not dictate the the blessings that God has, because His Word says that in the time of famine, He will have well spring up in our world. Famine comes at you, you go, I have have diplomatic immunity. (laughs) I love that. I was at the the eye doctor just the other day because, you know, I ripped off part of my cornea. (laughs) I forgot about that. One of the things he explained to me is that one of the reasons that that we start losing our uh, ability to see far away as we get older, he said it happens at 42, is that uh, not because your, your eyes can't focus anymore, the muscles have gotten tired, but because the lens on your eye has become less and less flexible. It's, it's oh, hardening really? with time. So the, he's like, you have plenty of strength to bend a lens, but your lens itself is now getting harder and harder, and, it, and then it, eventually it just hardens and just it's solid. And now you've got to use all I'm kinds of different. It. I said, no, I'm not. I, I can't because I can't bend. And uh, I said, is there any way to soften that lens? Is there anything you can do? And he said, no, it's just age. You can't fight age. Age is going to happen. Your, your eyes are going to get blurry. And I was just like, 
I have diplomatic immunity. <laughs> My lens. I don't have to agree with that. That's not who I am. I'm not going to have that. I'm going to go 120 years. I'm not going to have 80 of them be blurry. <laughs> 80 blurry years. What a horrible 80 years. So, you know, I got my eyes measured again, and I've been speaking to my eyes that I wouldn't have uh, the this uh, farsightedness thing going on where I can't see far away. What is that near far? I can't remember which one that is, but I can't see far away. Nearsighted means that you can see near, not far. Well, and so, so farsighted means you can see but I, far. But I not talk near. to my eyes. I tell them focus. You can see. Come on, you can see You're that. Great. You can see that. And and I you know I don't see immediate results, but every time I go to the eye doctor, the last two appointments I've had, the they say. Um, now, your prescription has actually uh, gotten better, uh, which we don't see, uh, but that's great. That's great news for you. So your prescription now is lighter than it was the last time you were right. here. That's wow. happened two appointments in a row. Are you serious? Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that because yes. we have diplomatic, diplomatic immunity. immunity. I don't have to bow to the rules of this world and what the doctor says and what the bank checking well, account says. Well, you know, says. your dad had heart problems, and so you're going to have heart problems. No, well, I have diplomatic immunity. You know, a lot of times Christians will talk about the generational curse. Yeah. And I think that if you put faith in the generational curse, it could really put you in a prison. Of course. But Jesus broke the curse, and you don't have to go through 40 steps to get out of that. You simply have to realize that Jesus broke the curse. This is us. I have a new daddy, a new DNA, a new Mm. lineage. I'm a new creation. All things have become new. I don't have to fight through, pray through, fast through some sort of old generational curse. I'm new. I'm brand new. I just have to receive the finished works of the cross. Amen? So John chapter uh, 4 and verse 17 says this, In this way, love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like Jesus. I love that. So our identity and who we are is Christ-like. What was Christ-like? What was Christ-like? Was he, he was a, did he he was a, a miracle diplomatic working. community? He did. Like what? You, you, you can't walk on water, right? No, he has diplomatic immunity. <laughs> you can't feed 5,000 people. I know that with some bread and some fish. Not five loaves and two fish. You can't raise somebody from the dead. Diplomatic immunity. He was in the world, but he was not of the world. You can't heal somebody from blindness. You can't re- you can't you can't heal without even going to the house. You can't heal some some kid that's how many miles away. Yeah, these are things you can't do. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. Poof, <laughs> healed. Yeah, that's impossible. Right. Yeah, I know. I know. That's exactly what it's Jesus impossible does. for you. But this is us. What is impossible to the world is possible for us. It is. Because, and, and it's one of the translations says this, as he is in this world, so are we. Right, I like that one. I love how it says that. We can walk out in the confidence knowing that it is Christ in me and what he was capable of. And you, you think, well, I can't do what Jesus did. He actually declared over you, and he is not one like a man that he should lie. He said you would do greater things than he did. Greater. Had done. You have the ability in you. To go forth to heal the sick, to speak the word of God, to declare mountain be removed and cast to pull money out of a fish, to pull a couple. (laughs) You need money? Just go fishing. Pull it out of a fish. (laughs) Where'd you go today, honey? I was at the lake all day. You were what? You fished all day. Yeah, making money. Just making money. Pulling money out of of fish mouth. That. That's impossible. It is impossible. This is us. We live a life that is higher. That 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 the world. And here's the goal. Everything that we do brings God glory. So your coworkers and, and in-laws and, and everybody in your family knows you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. They're watching your life. And when we live a life that is higher than what this world can have, mm-hmm. right? When mom broke free from everything, our uncle said to her, he goes, I never thought you would do anything in this life. No. You were, he, she was the kind of the, the, the low one on the totem pole oh, in their family. He's like, she I was never like the, re, the rejected he just, child. He said, with, it, it just so surprises us that you had success. Yeah. You weren't supposed to. You were, no, you weren't, you were you the were, most likely to fail. But that was the vote. That they, was the vote. Know, they, as a family, they kind yeah. of voted well, that she would be the one that was, not, that was slow. She had slow speed. She was, and so in slow. his mind, the only thing that was different about her was when she got saved. Yeah. That's the only difference. Is that when she got Christ in her, yeah. she began to break through the boundaries and the shackles that the world wanted to put on them. When we hear a different story about our heritage, heritage, we can start to live a different story. Right. Is that right? So she, she began to get new information, began to live a different life based on the new information she got. So just remember today, as he was in this world, Jesus, so, so are we. we. Pray we over the day. Yeah, let's pray. Father God, I just thank you and praise you, Lord, for every single person that's watching this. And Lord, that you would continue to reveal to us what it is to know you 
and to have you working through us throughout our day in Jesus' name. That, Father God, we are immune to the problems of this world. That, Father God, that we're more than overcomers. As you walked through this life not defeated, you weren't discouraged, but you walked in love and forgave. Lord, we draw on that strength that's within us to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy this clip. We've got to learn to stop looking at things the way the world does and begin to look at it the way that God does. That time is not the most important thing. Number two is people are the most important resource that we have. See, it's not about the time. If it was about the time, Jesus got to go do a whole lot of stuff. But when it becomes about the people, it changes. And for you, this is us. Who are we? People are the most important resource and the most important thing that we have. Not that time is not important. Time is important. But when you, look at the, when you look at things through the eyes of eternity, now that co-worker there that you could take a minute and, and minister to is more important than the project that you're trying to get everybody to work on. Not that we don't want to get stuff done, but I begin to look through things through the eyes of relationships that people around me are the most most important. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff that I got to get done on the house. But I also want to make sure that the people that are living in the house are truly feeling the love of the relationship that I'm supposed to be giving them. Come on, somebody out there. It's not time. See, when it's time, it's like tick-tock, we got stuff to do. Chip, chop, chip, and we're trying to get everything done in this life. And we don't take the time oftentimes to stop and to love and embrace the people that God has entrusted us with. That the relationship has to be more important than the time. I know that, that, that after service, I could go back to the office and get some, some food and get ready for the next thing. But every one of you are so important that if you have a prayer or anything, I'm in the back because people are more important than some Ritz crackers in my belly. Can I get an amen anywhere out there? Pray with everybody. I'll stay as long as it takes because people are the most valuable resource Grab me at the Walmart. Grab me in the, anywhere. It doesn't matter. That I may have stuff that I have to do, but in the glance of eternity, nothing's more important than the people that God has entrusted each and every one of us. See, we, we get this time mentality. We get it within parenting. Well, we've got to spend time with the children. See, time is the goal. How much time am I spending with the children? So a parent will take a child to the park. Kids go play. They sit on the bench and they're working or they're on their Instagram and their Facebook. And then they drive home and they spend an hour and a half of time with the children. And I've done my duty. I feel like a good parent and I have eased my conscience. No, 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 no. I can get more relationship out of an eight-minute drive to the gas station with my daughter hearing about her hopes and her dreams and her aspirations because it's not the time. It's the relationship that comes out of the time. Well, we had a date day. That's what we do. So we just have a date day and off we go. And so they go see a movie and then they go have... You'll see them at the restaurant. They all got their phones and then and we go home. Yeah, our marriage is awesome. It's amazing. No, you didn't develop any relationship in the time. So you got to make sure, nothing wrong with seeing a movie, but did you have some time where the relationship grew, where you were talking and you're exchanging? Because everyone that God has put in your life is priceless. And I got to stop making projects and things more important. And people cut me off on the freeway. Get on in there. That's all right. Because you're more important than the 0.8 seconds that I would have saved had you not cut me off. People become a, a priceless commodity in our life. You know, some of you teenagers out there, you're going to be growing up and moving out. And time with your parents can slide on by. And you missed an opportunity. What about? Yeah, I know you got to get to your room. You got YouTube to watch, right? You got Instagram posts to do. You got memes to make. You got important stuff to do. But what about taking your mom out maybe for a little coffee and spending some time because she's more important? Right? More valuable. You begin to invest in your parents and with your dad and with your mom and your siblings and your brothers and sisters who are going to be moving out. Right? It hit me so hard one day when I got married. I'm like, oh my God, me and Jason are never going to share a bed again, which is maybe a good thing. <laughs> and I miss my brother. I'm like, oh my God, it hit me so I just wept. I bawled that whole night. I just wept. It, was, it hit me so hard. Oh my gosh. Time flies by, but relationships are the most important. So we, this is us. 
People are most important in our life. Number three, you are most valuable. Say that. Say, I'm valuable. Doesn't that feel good? You can't say it without smiling. That's interesting. Anytime you feel down, just go, I'm valuable. I'm priceless. I'm made in the likeness and the image of Christ Jesus. I am important. I'm incredible. I'm amazing. I'm gifted. I'm talented. You are valuable. You are so priceless. Cleo was so important. See, we have to understand that we serve a God that leaves the 99 for the one. That you are so valuable and so important to God that he's been working all week long just to get you here today. Some of you, are, you don't know how you showed up. You didn't plan on being charged. But he was guiding and directing and he took time out of all of eternity to get you in this house so you could get a word of encouragement and find out exactly how important you are to him. He took time out of eternity to create you, to de- design you, to give you gifts and talents. And every day throughout the day, I know this. God's like, oh. How's God? Oh, he's so good. Oh, he's so all oh, good. Good for you. Let's do something for him. Let's do something. He took away. Right? I know that we're about the time and the efficiency, and Jesus could have been doing a whole lot more things. But here you got them walking in the wrong direction. I thought that was interesting. They're walking in the wrong direction. They're walking away from Jerusalem. They're downcast. How many people know in the midst of your mess, in the midst of walking in the wrong way, God will go out of his way to get in your way to change your way. I'm going to say that again. Come on, somebody in this house. When you're going the wrong way, see, we've been taught that when I'm going the wrong way, God will lead me. No, God will never lead me and he will never forsake me. And when I'm going the wrong way, he'll drop everything to get in my way, to help change my way, to get me going in the right direction. Yeah. That's the God that we serve. This is us. Where we are important. That it doesn't matter what way and how. And God will find a way. Try and touch and change your life because you are so important to him. Leave the 99 just to get you. Man, if you look back through your life, you'd be like, okay, man, God was doing some stuff to get me here to Living Word Bible Church exactly today because your eternity is priceless. It's priceless to him. Your life and what God can use you for and then your eternity is priceless. I thought it was interesting that it said that it kept them from recognizing. So they did not recognize him. They were kept from recognizing. This is us. I want to be the church that recognizes the little things that Jesus does every day in our life. I think we I think we miss so many of the things. Because we're so important and valuable that God sends and does. And he's walking with you even in the wrong direction. Even when you're messed up. Even when you're, you're full of a whole bunch of junk. God's right there with you. Walking with you. Talking with you. Trying to inspire you. Trying to encourage you. Trying to get you to, to find your way. That he does so many things throughout the day. To love on you. You ever chase a, 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 a 12-month-old trying to walk? You ever do that where you get them up and they, they, you know, they start going and then your job is just to keep them living. That's all that I'm trying to do. And so I'm kind of keeping them and I got to get stuff out of the way. Right. And I get the kick the ball. I got the dog out of the way and they're about to you keep them up. And then there's a table. They're going to poke an eye out and they get all the way across. the room, And you lift them up and you can tell they're like, yeah, I did it. No, you didn't do it. I did all of it. (laughs) I did every bit of it. To hear this message in its entirety, visit wakeuptv.tv and click on YouTube. And I wonder if sometimes God is like as we're going through our day and he's moving stuff out of the way and you thought you're annoyed and mad because you ended up being a little late, but it saved you from getting in an accident and your boss happened to see you doing something great and and you begin to see that God begins to move everything. And at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, I did it. God's like, okay, sure, you did it. Yeah, good for you. You did a great job. See, we miss throughout the day. I was talking to somebody after the other service, just talking about kids. And I'm like, man, we, you know, we wanted to have two boys and then a girl. And then we found out Baylor was coming. And I remember us being like, what in the world, God? Baylor's I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't imagine a world without Baylor. Baylor brings me so much joy. His fork and all. Everything about Baylor is so dang fun. Right? What was meant to be a disappointment 
was such the, one of the greatest blessings of my life. And then the fourth kid was supposed to be a girl. And we got Peyton. I couldn't imagine a world without Peyton. I could have, Baylor's going off to college last week. I'd be all home alone if we would have had two boys and a girl. And I was not ready for that at all. I got my Peyton in my life. And then came my savvy, my little girl of my life. And didn't know that God was shaping and directing and guiding things. And I was all disappointed and mad for a little time. Not realizing that the greatest blessing that God had for me was pulling some toys out of my way and getting some stuff so that I would not get hurt because he knew the future. And God's hand is the same way on your land. Life. He is guiding it. He's directing it. And then I do get mad. I'm saying, like, why did I get laid off? God's like, because I got a better job for you. I got something more amazing for you. Something up ahead that's going to blow in your mind. And you get the job. You're like, okay, I got it. No, you didn't get it. God got it for you. He orchestrated the whole thing. He found a way throughout the day to love you. He loves me in so many ways. Love can be found. God's love can be found. See, we think about the dramatic part of the Red Sea and the raising from the dead and God's love. How many people know that God is found usually in the details? He's in the little things of the day. He's in a handhold from your daughter, a time of swinging on the swing. It's a gentle breeze that just seems to hit you. You didn't know where it came out from. It is a boss who's getting ready to do layoffs who happened to see something amazing that God pointed out about you in your life and you skip the layoffs. It is God's hand upon every area of your life guiding and directing you. You're getting ready to go to high school and you're getting up to the class and you know how many kids that God shifted and orchestrated so that you'd have favor with the people around you and with the teachers and with the other students. Tuesday, Peyton had his, his first... His, I get up at 6.30 in the morning without an alarm clock. I just wake up now. I'm like, oh, right? It was 7.25 and I hear something and I'm like, oh, yeah, because I don't wake up with an alarm clock. It was my phone ring. It was Peyton. And Peyton had had a, a, a blowout. It was crazy. And it kind of almost spun around right there uh, on Brown Road. And I thought, thank you, God, for not getting me up at 6.30. Because I don't know. Maybe I said goodbye to him. Maybe I, I hugged him. Maybe I held on. And when he pulls out, the traffic that you knew would be there. And it could have been a bad accident. But instead, it was just a blowout. And it was no big deal. Do you see how much God loves me? God orchestrated my morning. He let me sleep in and he saved my child all in one breath. That's how I look at things in my day. That's how I look at things. He just finds ways to love you and I. And if we'll begin to recognize and see it, it'll encourage us. I'm going to give you this last point here in verse 25. Do the other one, verse 25. He said to them, How foolish are you, and how slow. Somebody say slow. slow. Slow to believe. They're walking away from church. Picture Jerusalem. They're walking away. They've seen signs and miracles. They've heard about Jesus, not even at the tomb. They've heard all these great things, but they're leaving and they're downcast and they're not believing. And I'm going to tell you this we are, this is us, Living Word Bible Church. We are quick to believe in God's Word. That if God's Word says that we can have it, we believe it. We get to the parking lot, we're like, yeah, I can be healed. I can be blessed. I can be prosperous. That God is my protector. He's my guider. He's my deliverer. He goes before me and makes a way. Everything in this lifetime, God. See, I begin to believe it. His Word says I have the mind of Christ. I am smart. I am made in His image. I believe what His Word says that I can do and I can have. Can I get an amen anywhere in this? His word guides me and directs me. Verse 28 and 29. And we'll close with this. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, strength to stay with us. We are number six. We are a church that hungers for a relationship and time with him. That's who we are. We love spending time with God. We get up in the morning and we praise God. We take Him in our job and our business. This is who we are. We draw close to Him. He draws close to us. It's a relationship. And so we're constantly just pulling on that relationship. Next scripture, verse 30 and 31. When He was at the table with them, He took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened. It's weird that their eyes were opened. Remember the bread symbolizes uh, Jesus that would be broken for them. I, I thought it was interesting. I'm like, why then? I want you to watch something. When Jesus took the bread and he broke it and then he gave it to him. Did you see anything? 
Is there anything that would be revealed to you at that time? He takes the bread. Here you go, I got some bread. And he does this. What was revealed to them at that moment? What opened up their eyes? It was his scars. All right, number seven. Throw that up there for me, Miss Betsy. His scars reveal who he is to you and to I. Come on, somebody. When you're broken and you're down, it is his scars and his broken body that is there for you. When you're going through divorce, it is his scars that says, hey, I'll take on your hurt and I'll take on your pain. That I am there when you're down to be your up. I'm there to guide you and direct you. When you have fallen, I am picking you up. No sickness and disease. I've already taken that on you. I've taken the sickness. I've taken the disease. I've taken the curses. I've taken the pain. I've taken the hurts that you've had in this life. I take it all on you, and now it is on me. And when you are down, he is there to help pull you up, drag you up, lift you up, guide you up. Come on, somebody need to get up and help me preach this a little bit. He wants to take you up. He wants to be your alpha. He wants to be your omega. He wants to be your beginning and your end. That when you are hurt, he is your redeemer. He is your blesser. He's your guider. He's your director. He is everything that you need. And when you're feeling down, revealed himself to you in that moment that he had taken on that pain that you had in the relationship that he took on that loneliness that he took on that misdirection that he took on that stress and that worry he took on that anxiety in your life he says I have been designed to take it this is who we are as a church we are a church come on somebody we are somebody say this is us this is us We are a group of people who believe what God's Word says that we can do and what we can have and what we can experience. We're a group of people that got the mind of Christ. We're a group of people that are blessed when we go in and we're blessed when we go out. We're a group of people that are healed, who are saved, who are delivered, who are protected, who are guided, who are directed. We are a group. This is who we are. We are people who break off the chains and the bondages of life. We are the people that go forth in your love and your forgiveness. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We are people that have no condemnation. We have no shame. We have no guilt. We don't have sickness. We don't have disease. This is us, somebody say. This is us. This is us. By your heads, close your eyes. You may be seated. Give us thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed today. Don't forget to like it. Like it, like it, like it. Give us thumbs up. Share it. Share it. Subscribe. Go to YouTube.com and search Daily Bible Study. And wherever your church is, make sure you're in it this weekend. And don't forget about Girls' Night Out this Thursday night. Yes. 80s night. Great teaching. Great relationships. Be there. We'll see you in church. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us today. Find out more or stay connected with Wake Up at wakeuptv.tv. You can also subscribe to our daily text reminders for Wake Up Daily Bible Study, which includes a direct link to the next day's episode by texting Wake Up, no spaces, to 84483. That's Wake Up to 84483. Thank you for listening to Wake Up on Christian Living Radio. Start your day every day with a positive word and prayer. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Christian Living Radio, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ 24-7. Our goal is to bring you a life-changing word through music and diverse programming like the one you're listening to now. Pastor Kenyatta Goins is the visionary of Christian Living Radio, and he's dedicated to the idea that Christians should even have a more prominent presence in the marketplaces. Maybe you need prayer for yourself and or your family, maybe for a friend. We'd be privileged to stand in the gap for you. If you're listening to this broadcast, click on the Contact Us tab and send us your prayer request. We'd also like to hear from you if you have something on your mind or just give us some feedback. We support many ministries, so maybe you'd like to make a one-time or a monthly recurring donation. We believe that when you sow into these ministries, you'll indeed be blessed. And of course, if you sow into this show in particular, we believe that it's a blessing for you, so please consider sponsoring us. There's a special area under the Donate tab where you can send your monetary gift or call 520-812-6363. That's 520-812-6363 to receive more information about sponsorship. Thank you.